In this topic, we're going to have a look at the duodenum, liver, and pancreas. So, by the end of this topic, you should be able to answer the questions, what is ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation, and egestion? What is the small intestine, and which organs are associated with the small intestine? We're going to have a look at the gallbladder, bile, and the liver, the pancreas, and what enzymes are in the pancreatic juice. So here are a few words that you need to learn. So I want you to copy them down onto mini flashcards so that you remember their definitions. You've got ingestion, digestion, which includes mechanical and chemical digestion, absorption, assimilation, and egestion. So press pause, copy these down onto little pieces of paper, and then we're going to have a look at them in detail so you can put the definitions on the back. Right, so let's have a look at what these words mean. Ingestion is when the food is taken in at the mouth, chewed and swallowed. Digestion is when you have large complex molecules broken down into small soluble ones. So you've got mechanical and chemical digestion. Mechanical digestion is when the food is physically broken down. For example, the teeth and the tongue break down the food in the mouth and the stomach helps to churn the food around. Now, bile also is involved in mechanical digestion. What it does is it emulsifies fat, which we'll look at in a little bit. So the food is just broken down into smaller pieces without the chemical nature being altered. Then you've got chemical digestion. This is when enzymes break down the food into small soluble molecules. So for example, in your mouth you've got amylase, in your stomach you've got pepsin, and then you've also got enzymes being secreted into the small intestines. So mechanical digestion gives a larger surface area for enzymes to work on. So chemical digestion is when you're using enzymes. So what happens to food after it's been digested? It gets absorbed into the blood through the small intestine wall. Then where do the food molecules go? They're going to go to the body cells. So food's going to be used by the cells for energy, growth, and repair. So we call this assimilation. Assimilation is the transfer of useful molecules into the body cells. So here you can see glucose is being taken into the body cells. And then finally, you've got egestion. This is when waste and fiber are not used by the body, and they're going to be removed from the body. So we call this egestion. So write down the definitions of each of these on your piece of paper. Okay, let's have a look at this little picture. I want you to match the words with the numbers. Okay, number one is ingestion. What is number two? It's digestion. And three? <clears throat> Absorption. Four, where the food molecules are going into the body cells, it's assimilation. And finally, five is egestion. Okay, so keep these words in mind. Ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation, and egestion, because you need to know them and how they relate to the digestive system. You should remember this from the previous topic. We looked at how food moves down the esophagus by peristalsis and how the stomach has got acid and enzymes to break down proteins. Now we're going to have a look at what happens in the small intestine. So the first part of your small intestine is called the duodenum and this is where food molecules are digested. The second part of your small intestine is called the ileum. This is where food molecules are absorbed. So an easy way to remember which one is which is D for duodenum comes before I for ileum. So duodenum is the first part of the small intestine. So what exactly is the small intestine? Well, if you zoom into the small intestines, 
You can see here they look like the little pink snake-like structure. And then surrounding it, you've got the large intestines. So most of what we call the guts is the small intestines. Looking at this diagram, which arrow is pointing to the duodenum and which is pointing to the ileum? So the duodenum is the first part and it's involved in digestion and then the ileum is the second part and this is where food molecules are absorbed into the blood. Right, let's have a look at the organs associated with the small intestine. So the first part is the duodenum. And we're going to have a look at which organs are linked to the duodenum. So the duodenum is a short piece of intestine. It's just after the stomach. It's associated with the gallbladder and the pancreas. Now remember that the stomach is acidic. So the chyme, which is the watery food with mucus, acids and gastric juices, is going to be acidic. When it passes from the stomach into the small intestines, we don't want it to be acidic anymore. So what is going to happen? Well, the pancreas is going to produce pancreatic juice, and then you've got the gallbladder producing bile. And this bile is going to emulsify the fats. So here you can see the arrows pointing towards the bile. This is stored in the gallbladder and then it's going to be released into the duodenum. And the pancreatic juice is released from the pancreas into the duodenum as well. Okay, so where is bile made? The liver makes the bile and it's made from part of old red blood cells. The bile is going to be stored in the gallbladder. So write the word gallbladder in your notes. So when there's food, the bile is released into the duodenum through the bile duct. So it's stored in the gallbladder, released via the bile duct into the duodenum. So here's the liver. You can see the gallbladder between the lobes of the liver. <clears throat> Now, bile assists in digestion by doing two things. The first is that the bile salts neutralize the acid from the gastric juice. So the bile salts contain sodium hydrogen carbonate. And this helps to neutralize the acids. And then the second part is it helps to emulsify fats. What do I mean by this? Well, what it does is, if you can see that big yellow glob, it breaks it down into small uh, fat droplets. So what it's doing is reducing the surface tension of the fat. And the surface area, therefore, is going to be increased for the enzyme lipase to break down. So we call this emulsification of fats mechanical digestion. The word you need to write down in your notes is lipase. So the surface area is increased for the enzyme lipase. Now let's have a look at what the pancreas does. Well, the pancreas produces hormones, and this is important for glucose regulation, which we'll look at later on. It also produces pancreatic juice that is involved in digestion. Now this pancreatic juice contains sodium hydrogen carbonate. What does sodium hydrogen carbonate do? It neutralizes the acids from gastric juice, and it also contains digestive enzymes. So we're going to look at these in a moment. So looking at the pancreatic juice, remember that it contains sodium hydrogen carbonate. So what does it do? It neutralizes the gastric acid. Write this word down, neutralizes in your notes. And then the digestive enzymes... Um, are the pancreatic amylase, protease, and lipase. Now, these three enzymes here don't work well in acidic pH. That's why you need the sodium hydrogen carbonate to neutralize that acidic chyme that's come from the stomach. So it neutralizes the acid, and then your en enzymes can work efficiently. 
Okay, let's have a look at the different enzymes. You've got carbohydrates. This breaks down carbohydrates. So the enzyme in particular that you need to know is amylase. Amylase breaks down starch into maltose. So remember that you've got amylase in your saliva and then you've also got amylase <clears throat> from this pancreatic juice and this is where um, it's breaking down starch into maltose in the small intestines. Remember that protease breaks down proteins and it breaks down proteins into amino acids. So where is um, where does protease work? It works in the stomach and also in your small intestines. And finally, you've got lipase, which breaks down fat. Remember that the fat is first emulsified by bile, and this increases the surface area for lipase to work on. It breaks down fat into fatty acids and glycerol. Okay, finally, in summary, just to recap on what we've learned in this lesson, we looked at ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation, and egestion. Can you remember the definitions for each of those? So remember that ingestion is the taking in of food at the mouth. Digestion is when large molecules are broken down into small, simple ones. Absorption is when the small molecules are taken into the blood. Assimilation is when the molecules are taken into the cells. And then finally, egestion is the removal of waste materials. The small intestine is made up of two parts. Can you name them? You've got the duodenum, which is the first part, and the ileum, which is the second part. And the organs associated with the small intestine are the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. So bile is made by the liver and stored in the gallbladder. Can you remember what bile does? It emulsifies fats so that the fat goes into droplets, and this makes it easier for the enzyme lipase to break down the fat. So it increases the surface area for the enzyme to work on the fat droplets. And then the pancreas. This releases pancreatic juice. And can you remember what's in pancreatic juice? It's got sodium hydrogen carbonate, which neutralizes the acid from the stomach. And then the enzymes. These include protease, lipase, and pancreatic amylase. And that concludes our lesson, the end.